when an embryo is in utero, um, uh, it is getting a supply of cells from the placenta, right? Uh, which, you know, I use a term, uh, and thank you for crediting me for it, of it's the placenta is a 3D printer that manufactures the baby. Right. Right. And, and, so, and, and so the placenta has like all of the stem cells in it um, the original boot disc, which is your term I utilize. Um, and so you normally in labor and delivery room pay for your, uh, expelled placenta to be burned in the incinerator. Right. Uh, and you pay a, a pay a, a it's fee waste there. It's a, a waste, material. waste Yeah. But it's crazy. Cause it's like one of the most powerful materials. It's like throwing away an extra set of, of organs for your child. That's a. It, it offended me. It offended me to see this beautiful tissue being discarded. And by the way, people say, Bob, why is a why is a neurosurgeon, you know, chasing placentas? And, you know, they thought thought I lost my mind. The reality is that um, uh, you know I recognized that that this was a pristine tissue, right? It's the age of the newborn. It has structure, function, and cellular content that is about as good as you can, it's going to get. Um, and most importantly, it, these are, these are, as you said, these are just paid to be disposed of when they're readily available. All you needed to do was come up with an industrialized process to utilize those materials and cells. So, so to your, to your point, um, the, the placenta is an ideal place to get leftover cells. Yeah. It all started when we recognized that you could find blood, blood, bone marrow and blood stem cells left over in the circulating blood of the umbilical cord at the time of birth. And you know, you clamp the cord, you cut the cord, baby in a little piece of cord goes one place, the placenta and the umbilical cord goes into the wastebasket. My concept at the beginning was why let it go into the biohazard wastebasket? collect it, process it, and use the benefits of our, what we know about cryopreserving cells to store them away forever. And yeah. so that's that. Yeah, I just, I just want, I want to break that down one second because they're, uh, first of all, uh, one of the <clears throat> divisions that, uh, that Cellularity has is Life Bank USA. And a lot of folks might've heard of cord blood banking, where right. you actually take the cord blood um, which has uh, hepato, hepatocyte stem cells, right? Hematop hematopoietic blood stem cells. Stem cells. Yes, thank you, blood stem cells. And, um, and that has always been the biggest industry, but it's missing the point because what you really want is the stem cells that make up all of the tissues of the body. Right. And, and that's in the placenta. So, uh, so LifeBank USA is someplace where if, if someone listening is having a baby, like my two... 13 year old boys. Now, 13 years ago, we stored their placentas, uh, uh, well, the, the cells out of the placenta with, with you. You have, a, uh, you have a, a room full of cryo, cryo freezers. And I'm saying, Bob, where are my kids stored? I go over and say hello to, uh, to their stem cells. And uh, now, 13 years later, my niece Christina is having her baby today, and they have a Life Bank USA collection kit. Well, they'll collect uh, the placental the placenta and some cord blood and that gets shipped to you and then processed and then uh her newborn will be on i think it's a moral uh obligation for any parent uh to to save that for their child i i couldn't agree with you more look 30 some odd years ago and i give you know, i give my older daughter alex credit for this right when i when i was a young surgeon and she was in utero um, and I went down to see the first trimester ultrasound. I tell you this story all the time. And I looked at her little peanut sized embryo, but the placenta was already a big organ. I said to myself, well, wait a second. In medical school, we were taught that the placenta was a vascular connection between the mom and the developing baby. As an engineer, when I looked at that, it didn't make sense to me because if, because if she was just a peanut size and the placenta yeah. was already a big organ, it suggested to me that the placenta played a role in making that embryo become a fetus and beyond, right? It yeah. was, it was participating like a 3D printer in printing the baby. And you yeah. said something very important, which is if you look at an embryo, there just aren't enough cells in an embryo, even at the maximum rate of division, to build a baby in nine months. 
Some of the additional cells necessary to build that baby have to come from somewhere, and they come from the supply depot, and the supply depot is the placenta. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just want people to recognize that the placenta is a valuable um, a valuable asset to a family. But listen, and listen, we're, we're, we're talking to government leaders in certain jurisdictions. This should almost be a, 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 a medical imperative, because if you have this supply of repair and starting material, you may in fact be able to 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 prevent and interrupt disease progress and yeah. and we're in the air we're in the era of 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 cellular engineering you can fix things if i have your stem cells from your placenta stored that's the perfect blank canvas to uh, to subject to all these new ways of editing the genome making you a better superior healthy individual creating immune cells that now target your disease, fixing your immune cells that give you autoimmunity. I mean, all these things are possible if you have the raw material supply. And you and you remember almost 20 years ago, I did that little skunk works experiment where I collected stem cells from the placenta from newborn rats, yep. processed them and stored them and gave those rats back their stem cells as they aged and the animals lived 40% longer than the untreated animals. Right. So we, you and I both know this is a potential cornerstone of the of the technologies that will allow us to live healthier, longer lives.